right, so here we are, we're in my mate's backyard. He's got a pot belly stove, shaped like Ned Kelly. And there's a huge red back spider living in there. And I think at the moment she's putting a web. So let's go and have a look. What's going on in here? There's the stove. Open the door slowly. Lucky for her it's summertime or we don't need to light any fires. In the meantime, this big red back spider's moved in and she's making another egg sack. She's already got one up there. These female red backs, they'll make egg sacks containing more than 50 eggs in each one. And if conditions are good, they'll actually make five or six of them. So she's weaving that together. The amazing thing about spiders is they can actually produce more than three or four different types of silk. The silk that she's making now is obviously for the egg sac and she's triple, quadrupling the coats to make it super tight. Like the other one up there, you can see the other one a lot thicker. So she'll do four or five different coats. But when she lays her other silk to catch her prey, it's a different type of silk, it's super sticky and it's much different to the silk that we're looking at, what she's laying here now. And to achieve what she's doing can take hours and hours. First the spiders will mate. The male spider of this species doesn't have a red back. He's much smaller than her, but they'll mate. She will store his sperm, and then when the conditions are right, she'll actually lay the eggs in there, and they're already fertile, ready to go. After about four to six weeks, all the little spiderlings will come out. They instinctively climb their way to the tops of tall pieces of grass or a tree or the bush or wherever they are to get up high. They'll let out this strand of silk and the wind will come along and catch it and then they'll let go. It's called ballooning. And they will float 50, 100, 200, 300 meters as far as the wind will take them and they'll float away to a new destination and begin their lives there as little spiderlings. Spiders can produce a number of different silks, some to catch prey, some to weave webs, some to just ascend to different places. You can see she's hard at work. She's been catching lots of prey over the last week and turned that prey into proteins that then produces her silk and once she gets to a point where she has enough silk and if she has fertile eggs within her, she'll make that egg sac and lay her eggs in it. So the redback spider is from the comb-footed family of spiders and her relatives are, her closest cousin is the black widow from America, the lower 48, which is just black all over. They have a small strip on the lower part of the abdomen, which is red. There's a couple of other species. There's another species in Southeast Asia, which actually doesn't have just a red stripe. It has a pattern on the back, looks like flames. You can go from yellow to orange to red. And then there's also a European black widow, which has just red dots all over the abdomen. In Australia, we have the normal red back, but we also have the European red back. Since Anivanine was made, there haven't been recorded deaths from red back bites. However, their venom is extremely potent. The redback's venom is up there in the most venomous spiders. You've got to remember that they've got extremely small fangs with a microscopic amount of venom. Compared to something like a Sydney funnel web, their venom drop for drop is extremely potent. With the redback spiders, the female has a more potent venom and she's the one to watch out for. Funnel webs, on the other hand, the female also has very toxic venom. However, the male's venom of the Sydney funnel web is five times more toxic than the female. 